We got one more guest and one more segment here for this week on Bang the Book Radio. That is Brent with the odds report from DSI Sportsbook. Recorded this on Skype Thursday evening. So once again, just like Thursday's show, this second segment will sound a little bit different. I'll do everything I can with the audio editing to make both segments run together as smoothly as possible. But in any event, here is this week's version of the odds report with Brent, the head risk manager down at DSI Sportsbook. All right, I'm joined now by Brent, the head risk manager down in Costa Rica at DSI Sportsbook for this week's version of the Odds Report. Brent, how's it going today, man? Going good. Uh, we're doing this on Thursday, of course. We're finally hitting the the NFL season with the you know good matchup too with Green Bay and Chicago, so that's always nice. And I mean, everyone's going to be jumping all over this game. It's our, our volume is fantastic already, and and it's you know you kind of hate when a when a number opens like around three and a half, and you but I mean as long as it doesn't land three, we're gonna we're gonna do all you know all right to this number. We're get bouncing between like three minus 115 or three minus 20 and or three and a half dog 15 is where it kind of we started with this so uh good two way action on this one and you know it's just football out like nfl football is finally here it's been a long wait i can tell you where they're not getting two way action on that chicago game and that's at the sports books in iowa and indiana where it's just a steady stream of chicago money and what's interesting is you know, again, we've talked about this with legalization and maybe the impact of some of these smaller local books that are, of course, you know, run by much larger operators. At least you don't have to deal with that at DSI because you're just kind of a worldwide thing instead of, you know, any regional biases. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of, you know, it's it's not necessarily a bad thing, though, when you if you know you're going to get regional bias and you can kind of be a little bit higher. Like if, I mean, if I was in, in you know, one of those states and, you know, like this game here, I mean, especially with the, the I'm, I'm going to use the word hatred, if you will, between these two teams. I mean, Chicago always wants to beat Green Bay, of course. So, I mean, if everyone else is like three minus 15 and you can run, you know, three, three and a half and, and still have you know people laying three and a half and still need the dog you're, you 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 know long term you should think you're in a good position all right so we'll take a look here we're going to go ahead and dive right in because we've got a ton of games to get to here and obviously with the first week of the nfl don't want to keep brent too much longer than i have to here let's start on friday night in college football game 303 304 i love this game from a handicapping standpoint i think it's compelling as hell i don't have any skin in the game myself but Marshall and Boise State's a real intriguing game. Yeah, I mean, for us, it's kind of a, you know, the the Boise State uh, win last week kind of, I think, kind of has this number where it is in terms of the the count being so one-sided. Um, I've got a, you know, I got a lot, lot of, you know, wagers on Boise State. My my count favors them almost four to one, which is like a really, you know, that's a very, very strong wager count one way. And you know, too, the number, I mean, it opened twelve, I it went up to twelve and a half basically on public money. I did take sharp money on Marshall. That was at plus twelve and a half. So sharp money on this game is on Marshall the dog plus twelve and a half. Um, I got nothing but public money the other the other way on Boise State. So you know, we always kind of touch on these sharp public splits, and we got one here you know this this game here and again I, I think the the Boise State win last week over Florida State and you kind of look like you know was that Boise State's doing or Florida State's doing um, but uh, nonetheless I've got sharp money here on this one Marshall plus 12 and a half is where the sharps are public like I said a wager count about four to one Boise State and, and again uh, doing the, this is you know that's that's for college football that's that's quite a strong count I mean yet generally speaking we'll get counts of like you know maybe two to one three to one, four to one you know really is a strong count for college football now, again, I, I understand that your job is to manage risk. Your job is not to get into the psychology of what these sharp guys are betting, but I'm going to make you do it here on the segment anyway. <laughs> Why not wait for a 13? Why, why take 12 and a half? You know, we talked about this last week of realizing when your number that you want maybe isn't coming. So, I mean, would this one have gotten to 13 otherwise? That's the, I mean, if no sharp got involved, I would say yes, it would have, just because the count looks like it's going to run away um, in favor of Boise State, and that, you know, I might not be shocked if this one goes back up, back to twelve and a half, but I, I, I don't think it's going to. I think it's going to sit roughly where it is, or maybe even drop down a bit. Again, we're not dealing with key numbers, but it's the whole thing. Like, if you find value, you, you know, if you think you're the right number is ten, and you can grab twelve and a half, you, you grab it. If you want to say, you know, I'm going to wait till thirteen. Well, if thirteen never comes, and the number drops down to you know 10 and a half or whatever you're sitting there saying damn you know i i gave up two two points so you really have to have some faith in your numbers and and if you 
you know, if a sharp guy finds value at 12 and a half, they're going to grab that right away. Um, you know, you find that with money lines all the time too. I mean, you're sitting there, say on, you know, on a price where you're getting plus 165 and you're thinking it might tick up and you want to hold off for 70 or 75 because you know what that means long term in terms of your overall, you know, winning margin, you kind of hold off and hold off. And while, while you're holding off, your 65 could go off the board and you're sitting at 60 or 55 and you no longer have a bet. Yeah, of course, something that's important to keep in mind here, there are different types of sharps. Some guys grab numbers. Some guys take true positions here. For our listeners, I would encourage you, as we talk about these numbers that were bet, you know, this number was never getting to 14. It was never going down to 11. So this wasn't a numbers grab. This is a truer position from the sharp that took this play. So understand here, too, that the sharp action has different contexts to it, and that's something you'll definitely want to keep in mind here as we go throughout the season. Brett, moving on here to game 305, 306, Ohio and Pitt. Some interesting sharp action here. Really some interesting line movement overall. Yeah, I mean, Ohio is, is where the sharp money is here that's gone from, I think the highest opening number was uh, six and a half, and that's where we also got bet, Ohio plus six and a half. So the number was was never higher than that. There wasn't a seven out there available, and we're already down to four. So, I mean, that's, that's you know, that's that's a substantial move going across four and a half from starting at six and a half and going all the way down to where we are. Uh, Ohio plus six and a half. Uh, surprisingly, I, I guess maybe I got good two-way action on this one as well. I mean, you, you don't think this is one of those games where you're going to have a whole lot of public money on Ohio. You've got Pitt at home as well, so it kind of may, maybe a more compelling story for them um, getting public support. But I've actually got two-way action on this one, but the sharp money came at plus six and a half with Ohio. Um, as I mentioned, we're down to four right now. Total really hasn't budgeted at all. We opened 54, and we're sitting at 54. I see some like 53 and a halfs out there, but th- this, the total hasn't moved almost at all. There is one game I want to talk about here that you didn't send over to me, but fortunately it's just one line up from one game that you did. Game 317-318, Syracuse and Maryland. We've talked a lot about this game here this week with a flipped favorite scenario with this line now creeping back down a little bit. What, what do the counts look like there for you? 370. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, there's an an, an age-old kind of thing where, uh, you know, a small favorite becomes a small dog. You're, you're finding value in that, you know, the team that was originally favored. Um, I, my count actually is, is pretty much really even on this one. Um, nothing really to write home about count-wise. Uh, balanced action. Uh, most of it's came where we are right now with, uh, you know, Maryland minus two is where I'm sitting. I know there's some one and a half out there, but I've got slightly and just very slightly more money on Maryland at this point. All right, so the game that you did send over with some sharp action here, game 319-320, just one spot down on the board, West Virginia and Missouri, a couple of uh, you know former Big 12 teams going at it now, now a non-conference game, Big 12 versus SEC, and a pretty telling line move here in this game. Yeah, I mean, you know, I see on the board that it shows that it opened at 10.5. Now, I, I don't know where that was that opened 10.5. It could be the, you know, the original opening number. I fortunately wasn't open at that low of a number. I did get bet, though, on the home favorite, Missouri, minus 13. Um, I've got a wager count of about 2-1 to one favoring Missouri as well. So I got you know just the general public going the same way with them. Uh, minus 13 was sharp money, though. I'm sitting at 14 right now, and they're at home to West Virginia. Uh, total has ticked down a little bit. And, you know, sometimes there is a correlation when you're looking at, you know, laying the favorite. The total usually goes up. But, you know, 14 isn't one of those, or 13 and a half, 13 isn't one of those numbers that's kind of really going to have a correlation between the side and the total. So we have dropped down just a little bit on the total. Um, nothing sharp on the total, moving it from 63 and a half to 62 and a half where I am now. Just the sharp money on the side at 13. And again, a reminder for our listeners here, we talked about this earlier on in the week. Missouri was a misleading loser last week. Would they have covered the number? Probably not. But they had some ill-advised turnovers, some multi-point swings, stuff like that in that game. West Virginia struggling with James Madison. So we get that sharp action. And keep that in mind for our listeners out there. You will see sharp action on some of those misleading box score types of games. All right, Brett, how about game 321-322 here? Cincinnati and Ohio State. This is an interesting little spot for you guys. Yeah, I, I, I like this spot for us simply because I do have sharp money on the dog, and you can figure that you're probably going to get more money on the favorite at this point just because the public generally likes to bet, you know, the top-rated teams. Um, Ohio State, I think, comes in at number five right now. 
Uh, Cincinnati, they're you know they're 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 a tough nut. They're a tough team. Um, we got sharp money on them at plus 17. Um, my count right now is actually dead even, which you know kind of gives me an indication that maybe our number was was pretty good in terms of getting a decent split. I am down to 15 and a half right here, and I've kind of just because my count's even, and I took the sharp money at at plus 17. Um, I'm kind of going with the lowest number on the board, which is 15 and a half. There are a couple of 16s out there, and if everyone pops up to 16, I'll probably go with them. All right, so we move here to game 329-330, Tulsa and San Jose State. And we've talked about this before that sharp sharp players don't care who's playing. They just want to get value relative <laughs> to their numbers, and, and, and this is one of those games. Yeah, it's almost like we have to come on here and, uh, you know, apologize for for the sharp guys finding value where they do, but they have on this one here. Um, Tulsa's on the road. They, they were a, a seven-point favorite um, at San Jose State. Sharp money came on San Jose State at plus seven. Um, you know, no surprise, of course. It's not, you know, not a very hev- heavily bet game. Um, situations like that, you just kind of go with the market. Right now, I'm at six and a half, or basically everyone else is. I mean, there's there's not, you know, there's not a lower number than six and a half out there. So I'm kind of with them. The one sharp bet, like I said, at plus seven. Uh, you know, public's probably not going to get involved on this one. So even if it went down to six, I think the only thing maybe I might be inviting is possible sharp money, but I'm just going to kind of go with the flow on this one. Well, and then that would be the question here. You know, like you said, the public's not going to bet this game. So if you get hit by sharp money at seven, why not just go down to six? Yeah, the thing is, though, you kind of it is it is early. We're doing this on Thursday. Um, This game here, you know, it's a very late game on Saturday as well. So it could be one of those situations. And, I, you know, I don't want to suggest that sometimes betters are, you know, tend to be a little bit undisciplined. But it, it, you know, has been known to happen. It could be, you know, the fact that this is one of those late games. It's on I think it's like ESPN three on Saturday. So people could be, you know, sitting down and and watching this game and have nothing else to root for. So they put some money on it. You know, chances are they're going to go with the favorite in that case. So you just kind of you know kind of it's a bit of a guessing game at this point and again with the the lower limits when this first bet came in so i'm not overly exposed at the plus seven all right so i guess here's a follow-up question for you then real quickly here again we are recording this on thursday night a couple days before the college football games what percentage of your total overall handle you know do you think you get by the time we do this show by the time we do this, it's it's not even it's not fifty percent just because they're just you know even on Friday there's, there's just not a ton of action on the Saturday games. Um, Saturday you know, Friday afternoon, Friday night that really starts to come in. And of course, Saturday morning is a mad mad rush, so it's a little bit less than half. All right, so I do want to ask you about a game that doesn't have any sharp action, at least not at DSI. But I mean, this is the signature game of week two. So game three sixty nine three seventy LSU and Texas. We have seen some movement on this game out there in the marketplace. And really, I just want to talk about it because it is the premier game this weekend. Yeah. Um, you know, unless you want to say USC Stanford for the Pac-10 or, or Pac- Jesus, I'm still saying Pac-10. Is, <laughs> is it like, wow, I got to get that out of my system. Eh? <laughs> yes, the Pac-12, Stanford, USC, big game. Uh, no, you wanted to talk about Texas and LSU, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, I'm actually... Right now, I've got actually my my count is pretty much dead even again. I I wish I had something you know one way to tell you about, but I I nothing really one way. My money's pretty much even as well. Um, yeah, I mean this line did go. I, I think the lowest opener was like four and a half. I didn't open that low, fortunately, but um, you know I, I basically came out at five and a half, and we're sitting uh we're sitting at six and a half right now where everyone on the market is. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, since I opened, I'm, 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 I'm decent across the board. Really. Um, I have you know, some guys buying, you know, buying points, taking, uh, taking Texas up and LSU down. So it's a good action just because, you know, they, they pay the extra juice for stuff like that as long as it doesn't land. So, you know, with Texas at plus seven, I, I have got, you know, some decent buys just on the, on, you know, taking that extra half point, but at the six and a half where we are now, just good two way action. All right, so in terms of your experience level here in this industry, seeing it go up from four and a half to six and a half, sharp money must be out there somewhere. Does this touch seven, or are we more likely to go back down to six? From what I'm seeing, I would say it doesn't touch seven just because the money, even at the buy point with, you know, Texas plus seven minus 120 that, that, that I've got in-house, um, you know, it, it's – you know, I, I kind of see that I'm already getting dog money at that point, so I really don't need to go to seven, not from, you know, not from what I see in store. All right, so we move to game 373-374 here down in the SEC West, Arkansas and Ole Miss. Some activity on both sides in total here, but it's sharp action on the total for you. 
Yeah, um, big move here in terms of the total, of course. Uh, we're sitting at 50.5 right now. I think there's even like a 50 out on the board. This number opened at 55.5. I opened at 55. You know, we were, you know, later to, to open it. number had already come down to 55, as you can tell by, you know, the fact that it's moved, you know, 4.5 or, or a full 5 points. Uh, sharp money on this one was in on the under. Uh, you know, in... You know, if the total is going to get bet up at all by the public, it's probably going to come Saturday, you know, game day. So you might see this this tick up a bit. But I mean, I'm just after I took my hit at 55, I, you know, you kind of stay low to the market and go down as low as everyone else's. We've moved, like I said, like from, you know, four and a half points already to 50 and a half. And I'm just kind of, if it, you know, if I can sit here, I'm going to sit here fine. And hopefully that maybe some over money comes from the public on, you know, the day of the game. Yeah, I mean, this one, you know, again, it's not getting too low, but, you know, 51, 52, 54, some pretty decent, pretty important totals numbers. Do you ever worry about getting middled on a total? Yeah, I mean, it it, it happens inevitably, and you know, inevitably, um, you're going to get middle on some of these numbers. But when the market, you know, opens at a certain number and the market moves down to a certain number, you kind of like, you know, I don't want you know, if I was in a situation where we, you know, got the under money at 55, and I say, look, I don't want to take the risk of going too low, and I'm sitting at say 52 when everyone else is 50 and a half, then it, you know, the only thing I'm going to do is attract more under money. All right, one more game to talk about here on the college football side, and this one is in the Pac-12, not the Pac-10, as you referred uh, to it earlier. <laughs> game 387, 388 here, Cal and Washington. Uh, Leslie, this is a pretty one-sided game, maybe both sharp and public. Just wait till I start talking about the San Diego Chargers. Yeah, right. Oh, we'll both do it. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, no, I seriously, I just, I just, I, I'll, I can't get it out of out of my system. And, and again, just for for the listeners out there, I, I did grow up on the West Coast, so I was watching Pac-10 all the time. So this whole Pac-12 thing is still, it was, it was, I was gonna say it's new to me, although it's not new at all. Uh, Washington, yes, uh, the Huskies that opened at twelve and a half. I got sharp money on this one. I think Washington's like right ranked around number fourteen. They had a you know a decent win last week against I think it was like Eastern Washington last week. They played uh, Washington minus thirteen. That was where I got sharp money. Unfortunately, I've got public money the same way, which probably isn't a surprise with the you know a home favorite in this you know in a case like this. And Washington's you know kind of becoming a, a marquee school. They they've been you know solid for a couple of years now. But I've got public money and sharp money both on the Huskies. Sharp money came at minus thirteen. Um, right now I'm sitting at 13 and a half. If anyone touches 14, I'll probably go with them. And I, I, I just get a feeling it's probably going to touch 14 by, by day of the game. And hopefully I'll get some money back the other way. Just kind of risk your exposure at minus 13 and plus 14. If hopefully I can bounce out of that number. I gotta say, I mean, you know, when it comes to college football totals, this one's very much on the low end of the spectrum at 43 and a half. Yeah, and I think you know the the Washington defense gets a whole lot of credit for that. Obviously, I mean they're 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 one of the, you know typically one of the tougher defenses. But yeah, when you're talking about a spread of thirteen and a half, fourteen, and a total of forty three and a half, that's 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 very very low. All right, so we transition over to the NFL side of things here, and uh, again, these numbers have been up for quite some time, but we're still seeing a lot of movement here week of the game as limits increase. <clears throat> We start in the NFC East, game 455, 456. The train wreck that is the Washington Redskins take on the Philadelphia Eagles. And it's it's been a pretty steady stream of money on one side for this game, too. Yeah. And when you talk about, you know, that these lines have been up for quite a long time, but also there's so much that happens, you know, in the last week building up to the, the games. You're talking about, you know, players who have held out like, you know, Zeke Elliott, for example, um, you know, Gordon in 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 the. Uh, San Diego, I'm going to say <laughs> again, uh, you know, you got holdouts and stuff like that, that kind of play out. You get, you know, Tom Foolery of Antonio Brown and stuff like that. So there's, there's still a lot of stuff that impacts these, these markets. And because of the preseason games as well, you know, you know, you don't want to be the guy who out there who, who, you know, played the Colts early, um, you know, getting a, a, you know, a number that they wanted and then, you know, plus three and a half against the Chargers and all of a sudden there's, you know, six and a half is out there. So a lot of people don't want to play numbers too early because of what can happen during preseason. Now, generally speaking, after, you know, week three, you know, your starters pretty much don't see the, see the field or whatever, but stuff happens in terms of off field, off field antics, uh, st- you know, stuff happens in terms of injuries and all that kind of stuff. So the really the, you know, the, the week, um, the last week before the season starts is really when we get to see a lot more action, uh, both sharp money and public money starts to come in. And again, to remember that, you know, people don't necessarily want to tie up their bankroll. So that that's another reason why you still get a whole lot more action the week of the games. Um, this Philadelphia-Washington game, yeah, I mean, 
Washington really is 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 a bit of a mess, and and you know I wrote down you know I had my notes here for on Tuesday where the sharp money came in on Philadelphia minus eight and a half, and I, and the note I wrote down is I see this going to nine and a half, and I think ten's coming, and you know lo and behold there are some tens out there. I I'm actually sitting at ten flat. There are some ten dog fifteens as well. Um, you know Philadelphia's going to be a very popular teaser side as well this week, and the Redskins. I mean they they do look like a bit of a mess. Um, you know the only kind of explosive of weapons they have on offense their tight end Reed and, and receiver Richardson both of those guys look like they're out I mean Reed is just like you know continually in the con- concussion protocol you almost feel bad for the guy but uh, Washington does look like a mess um, I've got public money on Philadelphia and I got you know the sharp money at minus eight and a half as well so I think this is going to be a really you know high exposure game for us especially on teasers now I do know that there are some books out there that specifically post lines with teaser protection in mind how much of a consideration is that for you in the NFL? Not so much. I mean, you just have to let stuff play out. You know, the you know that your 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 mark is really driven by the straight action. Um, you know, over the course of a season, you you definitely have to you know figure you're gonna you're gonna have a positive uh you know positive hold to teasers. So long you know long term, you're you kind of you kind of all right just running with the number that you're having one main number and kind of throwing the teasers aside. All right, so I moved down one spot here. Stick with a division game, though, also in the East Division game, 457-458, Buffalo and the Jets. This one's had some interesting side and total activity. Yeah, the over 39 is where I got sharp money on this one. Um, you see right now we are at 40 and a half. This number did touch 41 and a half. And, you know, we got comeback money at 41 and a half. We're back down to 40 and a half. So there, there is some kind of, I guess, you know, influential money out there that took the number back down from 41 and a half down to, to 40 and a half where we are right now. But, uh, you know, there's there's positives out of both camps in terms of both, uh, you know, offensive, you know, being being improved and such. So um, I I. I you know, I, I believe with the sharps that the over 39 is, you know, is the, the sharp side and the way to go. I could have been just a value grab at the under 41 and a half. How about the side? I mean, this one has come off of three just about market wide there. And that's significant in the NFL. It's it's not as significant in college, but it, it does mean something in the NFL. Yeah, I mean, right now the Jets are, you know, two and a half minus 15 or, or, or three dog 20 out there is pretty much consensus. And I, I think, you know, the, you know, there's you know, expectations on it, you know, are, are high for the Jets or, you know, like they, they're finally seem like the point where they're, they're a team that's improving, but you know, they're still laying, laying three against a Buffalo team. That's, you know, always had a stout defense. So I, I think if this is a neutral site game, would the line be a pick them? I, I think so. So the fact that they, the Jets are two and a half or, or, or three dog 20 seems to be accurate. All right. So we moved down here to game 461, 462. It's the total that we're focused on for the late kickoff in Tampa Bay between the 49ers and the Buccaneers. Yeah, I mean, we talked about this one, uh, you know, a few weeks ago as well about the the over being sharp. And it's it's interesting. You kind of uh, I feel a bit validated, I guess, sometimes when you, you know, the sharps came on the over 49. Um, we talked about it last week. This total had gone to 51. Here we are today. The, or sorry, 50. And here we are today. The total is 51. So, uh, you know, it's just kind of been a, a tick, tick, tick up from the 49 where the sharp money came in. Uh, so the 49ers over 49 is where the sharp money came. And you look at Tampa Bay. I mean, they, they still have that kind of explosive offense from last season and the terrible defense. So things kind of seem to, you know, you, you don't really see any changes in terms of Tampa Bay suddenly, uh, you know, finding themselves a defense. So you kind of, uh, I, I would expect a high scoring game. Unfortunately, of course, I got public money on the over as well, but sharp money came at the over 49. So we've got some games here this weekend that could be real duds in the NFL. We've got some big numbers that are out there, but we've also got some very good matchups. 463, 464, Kansas City and Jacksonville feels like it should be one of the really good games of the weekend. And it does have some sharp action to discuss. Yeah, I'm I'm actually kind of surprised that this number's gone down as much as it has. I just thought the public or you know the public money would be so strong favoring Kansas City and so you know so much against Jacksonville that this number would kind of hold at three and a half and you know maybe three and a half and juice and maybe four dog fifteen. But it's come all the way down to uh, to three where we are right now. Three minus one twenty or say three and a half dog twenty if you want to go that route. But I this is a, a definite sharp and public split. I got you know real put, push and pull action on this one. The public's kind of pushing Kansas City, driving the number back up, and sharp money coming on Jacksonville. Now, the sharp money that I took in house was on Jacksonville plus four, but this number had gone down. You know, it kind of held at three and a half minus one fifteen, and then got back bet 
back down to three minus one twenty where we are right now. So I'm sure out there someone else got hit on Jacksonville plus three and a half, and I'm I'm kind of you know kind of surprised by that just because I got such a strong count favoring Kansas City. Uh, Wager count is about four to one favoring them. And the thing too, like if you really delve into this, I mean, you, you've got a lot of changes for te- for uh, Jacksonville in terms of the quarterback and coordinators and stuff like that. And Kansas City, we're still talking about a defense that might not be that good. We're talking about an offensive line that might not be that good. So um, very interesting game for us. Um, I do believe I'm going to have, uh, you know, a, a pretty decent decision on this. I think the public's going to keep on betting Kansas City and we'll need the Sharps to win on, on Jacksonville with this one. Next game on the board here, one spot down, 465, 466, Tennessee and Cleveland. No notable sharp action here, but in the notes you did send me before we started recording, you did mention some interesting things about this game. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of like, you know, you, you get the impression that Cleveland's just basically overpriced right now. That, now, they did have a good run last year in the season. They did make some good changes, but, I mean, it's a new season, and really, you know, they haven't done a whole lot yet. Um, but you've got public definitely, you know, loving Cleveland. I've got a count. They're almost like 4-1, to one, almost you know, closer to 5-1, to one actually, feeding the Browns. Um, this line, it just kind of, you get the feeling that it, the number is going to tick up to six, but it's, you know, you're, it's really a hard sell on Tennessee as well. So it's, it's really a tough spot because, you know, you get the feeling that Cleveland's kind of high priced at, at, at six, but even six might not be enough to get sharp action the other way on Tennessee. So based on the way my count is, I, I think I'm going to touch six on Cleveland, whether it's going to go, you know, six minus 115 or whatever, whether I'm going to get sharp money on Tennessee at that point, I don't know. This number has, you know, out there, I have seen it bounce up to six and come back down to five and a half. So hopefully I'm going to, you know, I, I'm probably going to be in a position where I have to touch six on, on Cleveland and hopefully a sharp money that came elsewhere on Tennessee plus six comes here as well. As I mentioned, we got some real good games this weekend. I think this is one of them. 467, 468, the Los Angeles Rams taking on Carolina. This one's come down off of three, and, and I'm kind of wondering what the stopping point may be for this number. Yeah, it's that's a very good question. I mean, the fact that it just came off three, I thought would have been enough. I thought, you know, this number would have hung around two and a half. And again, because I, you know, I know from what I see in house that the public is is betting the Rams. And again, you, know, you get your typical high scoring teams are usually going to be bet heavily by the public. Your, you know, your New Orleans teams, your your Pittsburgh, New England, uh, you know, teams like that are are generally going to get you know public public money. Kansas City is one of those teams as well. And the Rams, of course, are one of those marquee teams as well with that offense. Um, and, you know, sure enough, I do have a wager count, almost a three to one favoring the the Rams. Um, I did take sharp money on Carolina plus three, though. So this is giving me another spot where we have a sharp and public split and we're going to be rooting for the Sharps to win with Carolina. All right. So we move another spot down on the board here again. Tons of sharp action to talk about here. It won't always be like this in the NFL, but it is a lot of fun here for this in week one. Game 469-470, Detroit on the road at Arizona. I believe we talked about this one last week. Yeah, we talked about uh, this one where early the Sharps did play Detroit. Um, they played Detroit minus one. I think this number did open like you know, weeks and weeks ago, opened out a pick. Um, and again, I think kind of there was a feeling that, you know, Arizona was going to get some support just because of the changes that they made on offense with a new quarterback, new system, new head coach, all that kind of stuff. But Detroit minus one is where the sharp money came in. Um, this did go to two and a half. And even like even currently, there are some two and a half minus one fifteens out there. I'm two and a half flat. I've got to account favoring Detroit as well. So I just, I'm kind of surprised because I did think the public would buy into the, you know, kind of the, the excitement, I guess, if you will, of wanting to support the care, the, you know, the, the, the Cardinals on that offense, but Detroit is getting the money, you know, not a huge count, but two to one favoring them. And I think part of it too, I mean, you're looking at Arizona, they, you know, they had some offensive line issues. Um, we also found out that uh, Patrick Peterson is going to be out. That's confirmed. Uh, cornerback Alfred's going to be out. So they're going to be without their, you know, two starting cornerbacks. So that could have some effect on the number as well see and what's interesting is you know all those updates and, and that sharp action did come in you know at least more than a week ago since we talked about it on last week's show and yet this number hasn't gone to three so not to say i'm going to take arizona but th- does that kind of suggest to you that maybe this line comes back down a little no, I, I think maybe right now it's just because we're still, you know, we're talking about games that are on Sunday. We got bet sharp money on the minus one. You don't want to go to three if you can, like, you can resist it also. If you're balancing action at the two and a half, you kind of want to stay there. If people want to buy it to three, you let them do that and pay the extra juice. 
All right, so we move down to another division rivalry game here. This one in the NFC East, the Giants and Dallas. Uh, we did see a little bit of an adjustment to Ezekiel Elliott being back. This line was seven. Now it's painted pretty much market wide at seven and a half. It's the total though where you got some sharp action, Brent. Yeah, my other. This is the other game where I had the notes. I, I wrote down if both Cooper and Zeke play, I would expect this to cross seven to seven and a half. And of course, here we are on the side at at seven and a half there. So that movement really wasn't a surprise. The total, I'm, you know, I don't know how the public's going to respond to the, you know, the fact that Elliott is in there. I did get sharp money on the under of this one though, under forty six is where that came. Um, definite sharp money. It did go down to forty five. We've ticked back up, a, you know, a half point with Elliott being back in there to forty five and a half. But I. I I think if this one goes to 46, it'll probably get bet by sharp money again. And the thing with with Elliott is, yeah, he you know he does make their offense better, but it also means you're running the ball more, which means you're running more clock. All right, so you do have a good spot here for Sunday Night Football, and, and that's a little bit rare because it seems like we usually wind up talking about you know situations where you get put into a bad spot early in the week from some, from some sharp action. That's not the case here for game 477, 478. You have to be happy with what you've seen so far. Yeah, and you know, I'm I'm happy because this game, you know, on paper looks so good as well. Um, in terms of the, you know, these these two teams getting a whole lot of support for each other. My wager count right now, it just, you know, it, it slightly favors the Patriots. I'm almost, you know, not quite two to one, which isn't substantial. Um, this number open at six. We're sitting at five and a half right now. So, you know, it really hasn't moved a whole lot. Um, the total, though, as well, I, I, I like what I've had, you know, the action that I've had so far because I, I did I did get sharp money on the under 51 and a half. Um, this number is at 49 and a half right now market wide. So it's moved the full two points. But the reason I feel comfortable with this is that I, I think the public is what's holding this number, you know, at 49 and a half. It, you know, will it go back up to 50? I, I don't know. But you kind of get that feeling that the public is going to be, you know, overwhelming on the over in this one. So I, I'm thinking I'm going to get real good action both sides of this one. I'll probably be balanced on my total and ride with the sharps at the under 51 and a half. As I said already, the, the, the number in terms of the spread has been good for me. Again, my wager count slightly favors New England, almost two to win one, which isn't a, you know, a, a massive count. So I think I'm going to be in a real good position in terms of the side. Um, I like where we are in the total. In fact, that, that I'm getting public money betting the over. I've got sharp money on the under. And because it's a Sunday night game, it's just going to be massive volume. Now, one of the things I suggested to our listeners early in the week here, in terms of my college football power ratings, I put together my numbers for the next week on Friday before all the Saturday games get played. So in that way, when I'm adjusting my power ratings, I don't overreact too much to what I saw. We know that the NFL, everything is visible. Everybody knows everything. Everybody is paying attention to every game. How do you protect against that week one to week two overreaction that we know is coming for next week? Yeah, you just try and you just trying to, you know, react to it. I mean, we talk about, you know, the the Boise State big win in college football, for example, what that can can do to a line. And you kinda you kinda look for spots like that where a line might be high and you're kinda just kinda feeling out process and then you get back bit back the other way, which was the case with Marshall, and you say, Okay, we we're kinda right. We we kinda thought they were gonna be overvalued. Your public is four to one that way, your sharps go the other way. Okay, we were right on that. So you just kinda you know, obviously we're we're watching the games and paying attention to everything out there as well, and you kinda just get a feeling to how much people are going to you know act and, and overreact um i'm particularly interested actually in this thursday game i i think you know i just get a sneaky suspicion that green bay is one of those teams that sharps are going to find value on this season i i think they might almost be hoping that the packers lose tonight just because they get more value further in the season brent the head risk manager down at dsi sportsbook in costa rica with this week's version of the odds report really appreciate your time as always man thank you so much for joining me we'll talk to you again next week Thank you. Looking forward to a great weekend, Adam.